Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lines TV. And today I'm bringing you guys another transfer daily video. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about Marina and Conte's plans for the January transfer window. I'm going to be talking about Lucas Campos and how it seems like the former Monaco Drazio of football might be joining Chelsea in the summer. And I'm going to be talking about Charlie Masunda's possible departure either at the end of this season or during the January transfer window. Now, getting straight into the video, starting with talking about Conte and Marina's plans for the January transfer window. Now, there are some shocking things to discuss in this video, so please be prepared. Conte and Marina's discussions were involving who the January transfer targets are going to be. Now, Conte definitely wants a left wing back option and preferably he would like a number 10-esque player and a striker. But let's be realistic. I don't think Percy will get all of these players coming in during January, but ideally they're the positions that Conte wants to strengthen within the team. Now Marina did talk to Conte in regards to Baba Rackman. Baba is close to recovering his fitness and unfortunately he's not in Conte's plans. Now it seems like Baba will be going on loan and rejoining Schalke during the January transfer window. In my opinion, I feel that if we weren't able to get any of the left wing back targets we want, I don't see why Baba can't be given the chance to prove himself now. He is playing in a completely different system. When he first joined Chelsea, he was unfortunate that he was playing under Jose Mourinho. And we know that Mourinho doesn't like both of his fullbacks attacking. He likes them to be very defensive and compact with the defensive line. Coming from Germany, you don't have much experience just yet. Then you're told to play in a very tactically demanding system under a very ruthless manager. So it was no surprise why I felt the biggest thing that he lacked was just confidence. There were certain times in games where you could see his potential. That game against Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League, I thought he was exceptionally good. And you can see the ability that he possessed. He was unfortunate that he picked up that ACL tear during his time at Schalke because he was actually getting in the team ahead of Kalazanic. But maybe this might be best for Baba to go to a club that won him and to use him in a system that's going to suit him. But again, it does baffle me in a way because Baba playing as a wing back will surely suit his attributes and strengths much more than playing as a defensive fullback under Jose Mourinho. Baba would have that license to get forward, he's got extreme pace, he's got fantastic crossing ability and he can beat a man as well. I really feel that Conte should really give him a chance but again it's in his nature to really be very uh, assertive with the players that he wants. If you're not in his plans, no matter if you're good or not, if he doesn't fancy you unfortunately, that's it, you're out. Still in regards to January transfer targets for left wing back, Laxalt is still an option, Conte would like to have him. As I've discussed in other videos, Luke Shaw is still another option as well. And Alex Tellers, they're the three main targets being looked into. But if Alexandro is available in the January transfer window, then Conte wants him to be his first target because he wants the club to get in there first before other clubs are interested. And even regardless of him being cup tie for the Champions League, it's the fact that if you get in there first, it's going to benefit you for the season after. Another option that Conte is looking into is a striker as well. Conte is desperate for a target man. This is why he was adamant that he did want Lorente, even though he was past his 30s, even though he knew he wouldn't play as much. He just wants him because he's a tactical option that he can use when he needs to. Now, Conte's dream target is Benteke from Crystal Palace, but club officials feel that, you know what, this is actually a waste of time to even try and pursue this because Benteke is Palace's only real striker. They've got a relegation battle. There's no way they're going to sell their only striker in the January transfer window, regardless of how much money they would get for him because if they were to get relegated, the amount of money they'd be missing out on is ridiculous. And the club feel that personally, it's a waste of time trying to pursue this. There's another target that Conte does like that, and that is... Olivier Giroud from Arsenal. Again, another top class target man striker. I didn't say striker, a target man striker. Conte wants that type of striker because you get those tactical options and flexibilities that he likes to use. And he's had a history of using them. Your likes of your Luca Tonis, your La Quintas, for example, your Lorentes, uh, Juventus. And he actually gave uh, Graziano Pelle, the guy who was playing for Italy during the last World Cup of career. Conte favours this type of striker and he likes to have them in the squads. But Olivier Giroud, it looks like he might be joining Everton on a permanent transfer. He prefers to move there because he would get consistent game time. And that's the only reason why he decided to leave Arsenal in the first place. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe Giroud might decide, you know what? Moving across London isn't too bad. I enjoy my time here with my family. Uh, I'm playing with great players as well. Still playing in Europe. 
there's possibilities. Moving on to the second story today, and that is Charlie Masunda. Now, unfortunately, it looks like he's either going to depart this January for sure, or potentially in the summer. Conte would prefer to use Masunda in the summer, but he only wants to keep him to use him for cup games. And at this stage of Masunda's career, that's not enough game time. It's not enough high level game time to really benefit him at all. Now, Masunda has recently signed for a new sporting agency, and they want him to make a move as well. And Chelsea officials actually agree that they feel that Masunda should make the move as well because like, they're thinking, you know what, we can actually earn a lot of money. We can maximise the amount of money we can earn off Masunda. Now, Masunda does have three clubs interested in him at this moment in time. That is Torino from Serie A, Monaco, which I wasn't surprised by. I wouldn't even be surprised if Masunda did actually make the move to Monaco. I'll speak about that later on in this video. And the third club are Borussia Mönchengladbach. Torino are a very good club that could work. And of course, when we did sign Zappa Costa from Torino, I think the club kept the relationship going as well. Borussia Mönchengladbach, the club have history. The club know that we can trust them to use our young players. And Masunda will complement their system as well. But for me personally, I would love to see Masunda at Monaco if he decides to go, which is looking very, very, very likely. I really feel that Monaco would be the best club for Masunda personally because you play in a system where he can play in his natural position on the left. It looks like Lamar will be leaving in the summer as well, so it looks like his position would be safeguarded for the season coming. He's playing in a system where they play attacking, attractive football, plus he'd have the game time to actually grow and obviously get that match experience that he needs. Masunda remains very confident in his abilities though, but unfortunately, regardless of how talented he is, which I personally feel he is, and he should have got much more game time recently. Unfortunately, if the manager just doesn't favor you or see you in any way just yet, then there isn't really much he can do. So I think personally, if I was Masunda, I would take that move now because you need to start playing more consistently now. You need to start making sure you become a Belgium international player I honestly thought when he was at Real Betis that he might potentially even make this World Cup squad, but that's not looking likely at all. He has to definitely make sure that he gets into the Euro squad for Belgium for next year. If I was Masunda, my target would be I need to make sure I'm part of the squad for the Euros in the next two years. If anything, this could be the type of model that Chelsea do use for some of their best talents that unfortunately just can't get match time in the squads. And this is what Real Madrid have done great over the past few years. Your likes of your Asensios going to Mallorca and them signing back. Carvajal playing a year for Bayer Leverkusen and then signing him back the year after. Sometimes you need to make sure that your best talent is getting consistent game time because then with that experience, they might become beneficial to you in the future or you can earn money on them and potentially look to re-sign them in the future. And Chelsea have a history of re-signing players. They're not ever opposed to that. So Masunda always has a potential at the club in the future. And to end on the final story, and that is Luis Campos, the ex-Monaco director of football. Now, there have been ongoing talks between him and Chelsea. A few weeks ago, there was even meetings and small discussions to start the negotiations. Now, it seems like there's a massive probability that he will become our next director of football, possibly during the start of next season. Now, the only stumbling block is potential outlay. Luis Campos does have an amazing data analytics system that he does use to obviously sign players and for scouting. And I think that's trademark, so that's going to cost a lot of money for the club to have because, of course, if they are going to bring in Campos, they would have to use his data analytics system that he's using. So that's the only stumbling block, but it seems that Chelsea will likely get this fee negotiated and get it sorted. And there's a massive possibility that Campos will most likely be our next director of football. Now, he's happy to accept the roles that he'd be given. It seems like Marina will get more power in the club. As I've been reporting, and as reports are coming out in the press, the club are going to outsource Emanalo's role within the structure at Chelsea. So that's realistically what's going to be happening. So it looks like for next summer, the possibility of Drogba and Campos working together could be happening. And I think Drogba having his leadership, his past experience, of course, he's respected by everyone at the club, top to bottom. That's really going to help us. And I've always had this vision at Chelsea where we could become the next Bayern Munich in terms of all of our ex-legends and pros taking up board roles at the club and really helping to, you know, with that footballing experience they have, 
set the direction of Chelsea for the future. I think sometimes you do need football people at the top to help with certain decision makings. And I'm hoping that that's going to be the reality of Chelsea in the next few years. But anyway, you guys, if you want more detailed analysis on the whole thing regarding Lewis Campos, directors of football, Conte and Marina, if you go to my channel, look at the news daily section, you'll see all the latest videos that you need there. It's definitely worth a watch, so make sure you view it when you have time. But anyway, that's going to end today's Transfer Daily video. Please like, comment and subscribe and if you haven't pressed the bell notification button please press that it only takes a few seconds and stay notified to all things Blue Lines TV. Anyway you guys I'm the NEFC this is Blue Lines TV signing out.